So we're live. Hello, it's Matt from Walks Preston. And today in the studio, I have Sean, the nav guy. So Sean, one of our latest um, members of our Walk Leader, Walks Guides team. And um, Sean, hi, how are you doing? Yeah, hi, hi Matt and hi everyone. Good to meet you. So um, I've invited Sean on today to chat about the upcoming series of walks. You know, we're out of lockdown and we've, um, we're able to go back to the group walks and we're wanting to sort of do, do more and more activities. So um, I've asked Sean because of his um, in-depth experience in orienteering and navigation. And um, if you've been on his, his um, some of his sessions, we've done the fly over Helvellyn and uh, we've done the online navigation. Is that right, Sean? That's right, yeah. So we have the next week is the starting week. So Sean on Wednesday is going to be um, starting a series of walks um, Wednesdays. They're going to set on the, the online system from 9 till 12. They're going to be about something like 8 to 10 kilometres, I think. Roughly. That's right, yeah. They're, they're, um, they're all about 8 kilometres, either f 5 miles, 8 kilometres, in that give or take uh, a little bit there. They're all pretty similar length yeah yeah so at a reasonable pace you're going to be kind of covering that within a roughly two hour time frame and there's kind of an, an hour um buffer on that so just so people are aware of getting there on time you like to kind of meet up at nine o'clock and um then if you can be away by 12 so and again that will depend on both the group size and um the individual abilities of the people who come on the, the, the walks yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah that's, that's absolutely spot on. So you're starting, um, I don't even know what date it is. Yeah, we're, start, we're starting in uh, next Wednesday, aren't we? Which is Wednesday. Is it? 20th? I don't know. doesn't matter. Next week, next Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. It's uh, Wednesday the 21st. There we go. Of April is the first one. At Harrock Hill near Parbold. So where's Harrock Hill? Sounds familiar, but not too familiar. That's right. So, uh, Harrow Hill, it's, uh, it's near Parbold, um, and um, or just just sort of uh, um, just slightly uh, northeast of, of Parbold, but very much south of Preston. And it's that area of hill next to Parbold Hill, really, uh, where um, it's not a particularly high hill, but because it's overlooking all the West Lancashire Plains, you can actually see right over towards Southport, Formby, Liverpool, one side, and then over towards Forest of Boland and uh and winter hill on the other side so you get fabulous views even though you're not that high up which is which is quite nice and you're going to show a few pictures maybe share yeah share that's right yeah so let, let me just go to the share screen and we'll be able to have a look at what this uh actually um looks like okay so we should be able to see there the that's the starting point always a helpful uh uh Way to begin. So there's the Rigby Arms, which is um, just outside Parbold, um, and uh, it's uh, that, that's that's where we're going to start. So there's plenty of park in there, which which is great, and uh, obviously the the actual precise location is on all the event details um, as well. Yeah, so I'll put a link to the the booking of the, the walk. I know there's a few people booked on already, but um, on the the walks Preston booking system, um, you know the postcodes there and, and all the other details. But if you've got any questions, pop them in the the chat of the live now or later if you're watching it back um, on replay. Then um, if you have any questions, just um, as usual, send me a message, give, phone me, whatever it might be. Great. Yeah. So this one's just just under eight kilometres. Just under five miles, and um, and here we have the actual route. So you can see the route um, starts and finishes at this point here, where the Rugby Arms is, that pub uh, on Highmore. You can see where it is in relation to Parbold down there, and the M6 over on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. And um, the the route is actually highlighted in the pink, and you can see we set off this way, and then we have two little loops. One goes, we go up around here. And then we come back to near the start and then do another southerly loop, finishing back at the starting point there, which gives that total of 7.7 .7 kilometres and, and 4.7 miles. And whenever I do walks, I'm always looking for points of interest uh, that we can take in. And uh, on this one, we, we have a few. Um, we have Harrock Hall. We go through the Harrock Hall estate, 
and you can see there you've got Harrick Hall itself. We don't go right up to the hall, but you, you can very much feel as though you're on part of the estate. And um, I mean, it's a really old estate. It goes way back to the early 1600s, and there was even a hall there before then. Plenty of history. You know, originally the occupants of that place were the Rigby family. That's R-I-G-B-Y-E, Rigby. And that's where the name of the pub comes from that we met, the Rigby Arms. And um, so it's quite nice to sort of uh, understand a little bit the history there. The, the Rigby family were um, uh, Catholics for the sins, would you believe? So they came, they came in for a bit of stick back in the 1600s. Um, uh, because, as you know, as you, you may well know, Lancashire was a bit of a, um, you know, Catholic stronghold in some in some places um so we were past Horrock Hall on that Horrock Hall estate and then we uh I, we, there's a little trig point on the route so I always quite like to spot trig points there it is there if, if you don't know what a trig point is, is it's one of those little square uh pillar things that the Ordnance Survey used to use for the ground survey and uh and here this one is it's actually this one's sat on top of an underground reservoir um that's run by United Utilities so that's the first little thing we just we, we head towards. Next little bit we go to is the old windmill, which is on Horrock Hill itself. And as you can see, you've got the ruins of the windmill there. And it's in quite a nice little bit of woodland. And, um, and it's, a, it's a, a list of building and a scheduled ancient monument as well. Um, it's um, I mean, it's been ruined a long time. Uh, from what I know, uh, it was actually a ruin in Victorian times. So it goes back goes back quite a way and um, I mean Harrick Hill itself is the first little bit of elevation that you get from the coast so it always gets gets a bit of wind I'm sure it was quite good in its day but it's quite interesting just to sort of see that and we have a little wander around there um, on this section. Just moving a bit further on you can see this there's a little bit of woodland which is quite nice uh, and then also just some open areas where we're going alongside and, and, and past fields as well. That's a little example of the route. This particular route, if any runners who may come on it, you may know that there is a Harrock Hill race. We're not running on this event. We're just walking. Um, but if there are any runners, uh, you and you, you might have done the Harrock Hill race in the past, we will be walking a little section of the of the race route. I would say the biggest, not the biggest, bonus of this little walk is the views because even though Harrick Hill is only it's not very high it's only um, 150 meters uh, height or so but because it's surrounded by all that flat land you can see for miles you can see right out over to Liverpool, Southport, Formby even over to North Wales on a clear day and then on the other side you see you're looking over the rest of West Lancashire up towards Winter Hill and the Forest of Boland so um, subject to weather um, the, the, the extensive views is is what we'll get on this walk which is which is really nice and um there's also uh, a little um a couple of other little bits that we try that we pick out you, you can, if you should be able to see that uh, there's a little area down here called uh, boar's den and you see it's got that historical uh, writing next to it because the boar's den is actually a um an ancient burial site it goes way back you know to 2000 bc and uh, back to the bronze age and there's there's quite there's there's quite a few of these around the country there's one here and you can actually see the shape of it so we're able to take a little detour off the path just to check out that uh another scheduled ancient monument that boar's den which is just adds a little bit of context to our walk and from there we head back up alongside this wood uh, making our way back up to the uh, to, to the pub. So that's, Thank you. that's a little uh, outline of of the route that we we'll, that we'll be taking. That, that looks really interesting, Sean. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we did that walk must be a, a month or two back now. Um, that's right. Yeah, and it was a little bit um, wet and windy and uh, muddy underfoot, but I think um, I'm pretty sure now it'll be kind of solid and, and dry. Um, yeah, I think things would have dried out a bit now, um, and summer we're getting the, the feeling of summer. So these sort of more explorey type walks are, are, are great to start slotting in. Yeah, excellent, smashing. So we've had a, a a comment from Jill Finn. Looking forward to the course and the walks. So there you go, got someone interested already. Great, excellent. Yeah. So we're, this is the first one. We're going to be doing a few. We've got other locations um, such as. Uh, around Stonyhurst College, 
Um, uh, the Inn at Whitewell, um, up towards Dunsop Bridge, uh, quite uh, quite beautiful part of the Forest of Boland. Uh, around Arnside Knot, again, different part of the world, different terrain, um, just overlooking right at the edge of Morecambe Bay um, and uh, Hutton Roof as well. We've got a series of these ones, um, just get, getting out there a little bit more. Now that lockdown's easing, you know, we can start exploring a bit more and um, hopefully these walks, will you'll be able to do that as well. Smashing. So that's an idea leading to the... Um... The fast track navigation course. So tell us about that. We've done yeah. um, quite a few of us have done the, the online session with yourself. So yeah, so hopefully you know if you've done the online session first, that's always good. That's definitely the best way around. But if you haven't done the online session, you can still come along, no problem at all. And it's a it's a fast track session to learn those basic navigation skills that will give you the confidence to be able to read a map and a compass um, on your own, enough to get out there and practice and try and improve things. Um, so and, it's you know, a four hour session, isn't it? It's that a four right? hour session, and um, we, we we meet up in Chipping Village, just at the edge of the Forest of Boland. We we start there. There's um, there's some loos there as well, if you know that we, we can use, and we'll have a little bit of a chat um, just outside Chipping Farm Shop. You can have a brew if you want, but we'll have a little bit of a chat there before we go out and actually start putting everything in, into practice. And we'll go out onto the edge of the Forest of Boland around Parlick Hill, just around there. We're not going to walk a really long way, but it'd be about about four miles in total because we'll spend a lot of time stopping, chatting, discussing, discussing how to do little techniques and what have you. So it's not about the distance of this, of this. it's more about that navigation training. Now, um, I'll be providing the maps and those that came on my online navigation course will know that I'm a big fan of using map extracts. Um, which are printed out to scale. It's really important that it's to scale, but it's much more easy and usable to have these things instead of wrestling with a great big piece of wallpaper that you get with a full size paper map. So uh, I I'll provide the maps and also some different map scales, which is, we'll, we'll, we'll be using Ordnance Survey 1 to 25,000 detail, but on the other side, you'll have a section of it, which is blown up to 1 to 12,500, which is the same detail, but it makes it really easy to read and it makes it easier to learn things and absorb things, which, which is what we want, because we're focusing a lot in a four hour session. Uh, another key thing for my navigation course, as you may remember, is most navigation errors originate from people looking at the map and it's the wrong way up. So we don't want that to happen. We'll try and nail that one. And part of that is um, part of it is, is just using your compass to make sure the map is the right way up. And most people tend to have base plate compasses and it can be a little bit awkward using them to do that. So I'll bring along some. Uh, different types of compasses like these little fellas here, these silver beginner wrists. You can hold it on your wrist like that, put your map next to it. So it's dead easy to make sure that your map's the right way up. And uh, you can really sort of take things to the next level once you've got that little basic thing nailed and sorted. So, um, yeah, there we go. That's 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 basically what the session's going to involve. We're going straight in. We'll, we'll, we'll just uh, um, take it in turns to, to, to navigate and we'll try out a little different ways of using the compass the, the traditional compass bearing but you know i don't think you need to use that in terms of navigation essentials but we talk about it anyway and then you can see what works best for you and most people tend to realize that just keeping it really simple using this sort of compass works really well and having those usable map extracts is a game changer i think so uh, hopefully you come along and um yeah you should you should hopefully get a lot out of it as well we pack a lot into that four hours and um, some great skills that hopefully will stay with you um, that you can that you can use on your own adventures as well. Smashing, Sean. I think what's really important is um, the skills that they will learn. You know, you've told me before that you condense a lot of information, to, but relay it in a very easy to consume fashion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we just uh, keep it nice and simple. Um, you know, there's two big things with navigation, direction and distance. And, uh, you know, with with a, a basic understanding of just keeping the map the right way up, that can sort out your direction. And in terms of distance, understanding scales, you know, there's just a few simple basic things that if you can, you can have in your mind. So you understand the scales that, and that sorts your distance out. So you're getting the basics. Um, 
And yeah, a lot of people, I've, I've done a lot of these classes and sometimes I have people that come on and think, they're sort of panicking a bit thinking, oh, I can't do anything. And I say, you know, don't worry about it at all. And uh, and they go away at the end of the session over the moon thinking, wow, oh, that's brilliant. That's 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 really, I, I really get that. And I'm really confident to go out there and, and, and start doing it. Because again, if you've been on the online class, one of the things I mentioned at the start is a big part of it is just confidence. A lot of people convince themselves they can't do it and don't want to do it but it's just that just getting some basic stuff understood and then woof, you're flying smashing well i think a really important thing is you know uh, we've had a lot of people through lockdown um going out on their own walks by themselves we've had um the buddy group set up so people are going out in pairs and then we've had the um we've we're running now on the 15th week of the walk of the week. So I create a map using the Outdoor Active um, software and then people turn up and say, I want to see it, I want to go on that walk. And they take away that walk on the app, but the skills that they can learn on this fast track navigation course are gonna help them to navigate better, both from a printed map and using technology or deciding which is better in a particular moment, whether there is, the um you know sometimes they're coming back from these walk of the weeks and saying well the app told me to go back here or i was missing you know in the wrong place here or that the signal wasn't there you can't always rely on that technology so just you know, yeah i mean it, they're very useful though i mean we, you know we live in the digital world and i sometimes use the app those apps as well outdoor active view range all those ones um uh, but i do think if you if you have some basic navigation skills under your belt you can use those apps more effectively. You'll you'll be better at using them. So don't go thinking what I'm talking about is just traditional old school navigation. It's not. I'm a big believer in getting the best of both worlds, using the technology, the apps, and also the paper maps as well. Um, I certainly do. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, even if you're an app user, you're more than welcome and you'll get loads out of it and you, you'll be better at, at using them. Uh, and just to reiterate, they just need to turn up in their boots and clothes. They don't need to bring any. Company. Yeah, no, I mean, you can bring a company, you can bring it your own company. It's handy if you do bring your own, but you don't have to. Don't worry. Don't go out and buy one, especially. Uh, I'll, I'll have spares, uh, and you, they don't need a map. Um, you just need normal walk it walking gear. So that the, this standard kit that uh, that we'd have. I mean, waterproof uh, over trousers. We are going onto the hill there, so uh, a, a waterproof jacket with a hood and waterproof over trousers. A few little snacks to keep you going, a bit of a drink, possibly. Um, and other than that, yeah, it's that's that's all it is. Smashing. And, and again, you said it was just probably four miles, something like that. So it's not like a high. Yeah, kick. in terms of distance, it is four miles. I mean, we the, the the aim is not to walk loads of distance. But the aim is to sort of bed in those those skills. And that four miles involves walking over different types of terrain, where I point out loads of different things like there's a really good places where you can understand and really get to grips with the shape of contours those lines of equal height um we do a little bit of moorland and uh, a little bit of compass work just to try that out on the open fell but also um we come back on a more lowland route because some people have got it in the head that um that navigation higher up in the hills or in the mountains is is harder than it is at low down. I think it's the other way around. I think it's quite hard to, 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 to navigate lowland routes. You know, you're trying to find styles over here and is it through the field that way or around this way? Um, so we do that a different type of navigation coming back, uh, which is just as hard, just as relevant. And so that four miles covers it all really. Um, but, you know, we, we, we'll be going, we spend a lot of time talking, discussing on there. So, uh, and if needs be, we can actually shorten it if we needed to. Um, that's not a problem. Uh, so don't worry about um, worrying about if you're fit enough. It's it's very much uh, open to everybody in that respect. Fantastic, Sean. We've spoken about the the series of walks. We've spoken about the um, the fast track navigation course. Um, that's excellent. Really glad you're um, in the team and supporting our guys get out there and building their confidence and their skills and abilities to be more regularly active in the outdoors. So um, fantastic. Great. Yeah. And I uh, hope to see you all soon. Super. Right. That's 20 minutes. Um, take care for now and we'll catch you on another live stream.